Yo guys, Aaron Pro here, and today I'm gonna be showing you guys part three of the skill framework tutorial. It's gonna cover the server side, and we're also gonna fix a couple things and make some things a little better. So to start off, let me just show you guys the final product. It's just gonna be the hitboxing and some like minor bug fixes. So we've got those dummies right here. As you can see, I'm able to hit all of them. And um, the damage is, um, the hitboxes are pretty accurate. And I can show you if I like stand really close to one, all three of the shots will hit. So, oh wait, yeah, there we go. It'll do like 30 damage. Yep, that's like 30 damage and this loss is 10. And then you can see that each slice only does 10 damage. So the closer you are, the more damage it's going to do. Oh, and there's also a little hit effect if you uh, didn't catch it then. But there's like a little hit effect. So let me grab that hit effect actually. It's basically... I don't know why these are all expanded, bruh. Okay. Let me emit these for you so you guys can see what it looks like. It's just a very simple slash. You guys can like edit this to make it look better if you want. But yep. So let's get right into making this. So first of all, we can like paste in our um, asset. I, I will provide this in the description. Uh, you guys just, all you have to do is just download it. Or not even download it, I think you can just uh, straight up purchase it on Roblox. It'll be free. And then you can use it from your toolbox. All right, so let's see. The first thing that we're gonna like change is the rock amount thing. The rocks, so I wasn't aware of this at the time, but um, wait, hold on, let me uh, put this on the other side so I can reference it. I wasn't aware of it, but uh, this basically amounts to zero seconds. So the frame rate doesn't actually impact that. It'll, I mean, the frame rate, the frame rate would just be uh, this time right here. So you want to set it to 0 0.01. Just make sure that at a high frame rate, there isn't like a billion rocks. So yeah, you can just set it to 0 0.01. That like pretty much fixes it. Uh, another thing we're gonna change is this right here. So doing this is not very smart um, because there can be a little threading issue. So what we're gonna do is just gonna do task dot delay, and then we're gonna delay this by 0.5 seconds. Function, and then we're just gonna put all that in there minus the return. Get rid of that. And same thing with this. Um, where's the slice? Oh, here it is. Honestly, we don't need that. Get rid of that and just remove it um, here. And we can make the delay time on this maybe a little longer. Actually, nah. 0.5 sounds right. We just wait another one second before that before destroying the slice in case the particles are still alive. So that should be the fix. Uh, we can actually test this by increasing this to like, I don't know, 18. Just a large number and we can see that there won't be an error. Yep, and you can see. It all works perfectly. No lag at all, no errors at all. 
I would recommend this if you have um, a lot of uh, slices going on because you could have more than three which is the default amount you could have this many so you're probably gonna need to make this change cool I'm gonna set this back to two now uh, let's do the hitboxes so the hitboxes are gonna be on the server which is right here one thing that I'm going to actually alter that I forgot to do right now is the uh, hitbox C-frame. So instead of um, sending over the character, I'm going to send over a C-frame. That way the server and client have the same C-frame value. So it's just going to be human library part uh, C-frame. And then I'm going to make this bigger so you guys can see. Call C frame equal to CF. And then over here, instead of it saying that, just set it to params.c frame. Nice. Let's go back to the server. By the way, that is in there. This is the server one. And the client one was. Um, in the skill replicator if you didn't remember all right so how are we going to do the hitboxes since there's three of them we're certainly going to have to loop three times right and the way i'm going to do the hitboxes this time is i'm actually going to use the newer version of get touching parts or region three um i should have done this earlier but i just didn't know that these things existed so Here we go, this is how you use them. We're gonna set up a overlap params. That's basically like raycast params, but for um, hitboxes. And we're gonna use a blacklist here. And the things that we're blacklisting or ignoring are the workspaces map and our own character. Nice. So now we're going to need to loop three times. So for i equals zero, two, do. It's basically the same math as the client one. We're going to keep track of a hitbox for each of these, um, each of these slashes. And then we're going to create a new C frame and it's equal to our C frame multiplied by frame.angles and then with a rotation on the y-axis because this time if you look over here we did it on the z-axis and we also rotated about 90 degrees that's because the mesh itself was um, in the wrong direction but over here the hitbox is going to be in the right direction when it's made so we don't need to uh, actually change anything here it's just going to be at the y-axis instead of rotating it by 90 and doing it on z uh, okay, and now this part's a little bit interesting. Uh, the total distance covered by my slash is about 75 tiles. So I'm going to base that, I'll base my hitboxing on 75 tiles. And I'm going to use a slightly um, more efficient way and more accurate way than uh, dot touched. So I'm basically just going to create a hitbox in a line for 75 tiles per uh, within the time frame. I'll tell you guys the math later, but I'm gonna separate do 15 slices, I guess, out of our total distance covered. So let's just do some stuff. So we're gonna actually make the hitbox now. And that's just gonna be workspace. Get parts bound in bounds in box. It's gonna be our new C frame multiplied by C frame the new zero zero and then I multiplied by negative five. So where did I get this negative five number? Well if my total distance covered is 75 and I'm looping I mean and I'm slicing the total distance into 15 pieces 
then it's just gonna be 75 over 15 to get the size of each slice, which is five in this case. So now we have to do the size. So the size is gonna be the same as the dis displacement here. So vector3.new, this is how wide it is, which is just the same as your mesh, how tall it is. And then this is the, the, the size, I guess, um, in terms of how long it is of the distance which we said was five, so it has to be five. And then we're gonna send in our parameters here. And then we're gonna loop through every part within this hitbox. And now we're gonna check if the parts parent the character, which you can do by finding if it has a humanoid, right? And then if our hits, which means like if our hits table already has has your part, part parent or your character in it, that means that we've already hit this thing once. We should not hit it again. And then we should make it do damage. Okay, now outside of this, we are going to put a weight, the total time it takes for my projectile to travel to the end, travel all 75 tiles, is 0.5 seconds. So basically you can, you can do the math, right? So that'd be, we, if we had, um, 15 slices, right? Within 0.5 seconds, right? You would just take that 5, that 0.5, and divide it by 15, and you should get like 0 0.03 or something. I'm pretty sure it's that. Uh, you'd have to change yours, your number based on the same math that I did, which uh, was point. Uh, 0.5 divided by 15. So if your total time was 1, you'd do 1 divided by 15, or how many segments you want. The higher this number, the more accurate and the less efficient it's going to be. So I just kept it at 15 because I think that's pretty reasonable. Okay. And the last thing that we have to do is we actually have to separate um, each hitbox on its own thread so they don't like yield to each other. That would be really weird because um, basically one of the slices would be detected first, then the other two would register one after another. It'd be really weird, delayed almost. So let's test the damage here. It should work. Oh, I don't actually have a dummy to test this on. Okay. Let's uh, just make a few of these so you can see that they actually like go through and stuff. As you can see, we're slicing them. If you stand like really close to it, it'll do a lot of damage. See? If you stand really far, only one of the slices is going to hit, so it's going to do less damage. It's like a shotgun almost. And like, to review the math here, all I'm doing right here is uh, displacing it by negative 20, sending it to the middle, which is 0, and then sending it to the right, which is to positive 20, because we looped 3 times. So that's basically what's going on. The first time is negative, second time is uh, 0, and after that it's going to be positive. So that's that. Uh, let's do the hit effect now. The hit effect's in there. As I said before, it's gonna be in the description. So the, this is actually really easy. Um, you just C frame it and make it emit. 
that's the code here we clone it we c frame it to the root of the enemy we rotate it randomly we parent it to the effects folder and then we emit 25 and then we add it for one second so if i run it now as you can see they have the little slash playing on it Pretty sure you could hit all three like that. Yeah, yeah, see? Three hits. It looks really cool. And we can test the uh, damage to make sure it isn't like hitting twice. It shouldn't hit twice since we're using a little hits table, but let's just test it to be sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And he's dead all three of these are actually dead but yeah it worked it only did 10 damage now I'm gonna go through uh, what you could do to customize now but if you like it the way it is you can just uh, click off the video so let's go into what uh, you can really change about this so obviously as I said before, you can change these numbers here, like the 15 to like 20 or something, or even less if you want it to be less precise. Um, and then the other things you can change, the damage obviously, set to whatever you want. Uh, and the hit effect here, you can, ch so let's say you have like a more fancy hit effect than mine and you have multiple particles you can store them all within this one attachment loop through the attachment and just emit all of the shard uh, all of the particles inside and the way i usually do it is i actually set a predetermined emit count attribute which in my case it was 15 but it should have been 25. um yeah so i would set an attribute like this i would get the attribute in the loop and i just uh emit it by the amount the attribute returned that's just like an easier way to do it and yep so that was part three of the skill framework uh all we did was really finish the triple slash from last video do the server side of it this video was shorter than the others but um that's because i was a little low on time the next video that i'm going to be making is part possibly part four i'm not sure i might do a part four depending on how you get how well you guys receive this and um the part four will cover the input module which i did not set up for this yet and the the uh example skill is going to be something like a holdable skill or something a holdable skill that's replicated onto the server not like the aoe tutorial that i did a while ago that one isn't um, actually a real server-side holdable move. It just holds it down on client. But in the in the next one, I'm going to do a uh, holdable attack on the server, which means the server is actually able to detect when you're holding a key or not, which is pretty cool. But yeah, uh, if you like this video, make sure you um, actually hit that like button, subscribe, you know, comment. I'm going to put my Discord server in the description as usual. Make sure you guys join that as well. We have a lot of uh, really helpful people in there who can help you with your script if um, you have an error or something. I'm also there. You can like DM me as well. Um, yeah, we also do voting there too. So if you guys want to vote for the next video, you guys can do it there. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.